We're on the farm of Brian Kennedy in Grange Ford outside Tolo in County Carlow. This farm would have started up in 2014 milking on a one Lely A4 uh, robot and put in a second one in 2015. Prior to that they would have been milking in a six unit parlour. So the six unit parlour is up in the farmyard and when Brian was looking at robots and and or looking at actually putting in a parlour the decision was made to do a greenfield site um, in the 100 acre block. So basically where the farmyard is, is literally just the farmyard. There's no land around it whatsoever. So every time the cows were milked morning and evening, the cows had to cross the road. So no matter what was going to be done, the new milking facility was going to be put up in the 100 acre block. So Brian would have looked at um, other parlours, he would have looked at robots, and the decision then was to put the robot, uh, put two milking robots in the middle of the 100 acres. So as you can see behind me, the shed is very minimal, so the shed is under 200 metres squared. Um, so it only needed a planning exemption, it didn't need planning permission. The first robot, as I said, went in in 2014, so it went in in April 2014. The cows, there was, would have been 70 cows milking at the time in the six unit parlour, so they would have been transitioned over onto the robot in April. And then the following April, then the second robot went in. So the herd would have been gradually built up over the years. It went from 90 cows to, I think it was 110 cows, then about 120. So in around now, there's about 120 odd cows milking for the last four years on the two robots. And that's kind of what it's going to stay at. Back where the old parlour is, the old parlour is still there. It's used as a dry off facility. Um, there is also dry cow housing up there, so there's a cubicles there for about 100 cows, and there's dry, uh, dry cow bedding then as well, so straw bedding then for um, cows, and the heifer calves and maiden heifers are also all kept up there as well. So I suppose up until 2011, these cows were uh, all year round calving. They would have been a Holstein, a very Holstein herd. Um, they would have been kept in from September until pretty much April on a buffer feed until 2011 and then in 2011 then uh, the decision was made to change it to a spring calf and herd and a grass based system. The cows now calve uh, from about the 5th of February and I suppose the six week calving rate here is always 90 plus percent so it's 92 percent last last year. The cows calve to grass so as they calve then they're calved up in the old uh, up in the farmyard they're across the road, um, they walk down the lane, the milk lorry lane here, which is about, I think it's about 600 metres, give or take, down to the robot shed then, into the robot, milked then for the first time. And they stay down there, so from whenever they calve in February, March, they stay down here then until the end of the year. So end of the year is more so wet, weather dependent because there is no housing here. Um, so it could be, I suppose, the earliest they were ever dried off here and the robot shut down was about the 5th or 6th of December. The latest that was ever milked was in 2019. It was milked up until the 24th of December down here. So in general, most of the time, there's about six weeks minimum that the robots are not used. So usually for the end of December and all of January, there's no cow's milk down here. And as the cows are dried off, then they're brought back up to the old parlour, dried off there and then kept up there for dried cow housing. So what's built here is uh, a shed that's under 200 metres squared. So it only needed a planning exemption, didn't need planning permission. Um, there's a tree bay tank there. Um, there's also three uh, spans of locking barriers there, so there's enough, cow, uh, enough feeding for 21 cows. There's the grazeway obviously is at the end of the tank, there's two robots in there, there is the bull tank room, there's a small office because we have the main office up in the farmyard, so, and then there's a kind of plant room with the compressor and um, a few other bits in that as well. So it's a very minimal build, um, we didn't need any housing here as all the housing is there's a sufficient housing up in the old farmyard so the decision was literally just a milking facility so same as putting a parlour in the middle of the block um, and then roadway wise and infrastructure wise um, most of it was here from the from the parlour anyway so you had a main roadway anyway which is the a lane now and we just put in a small little cow path then for the B lane. C just basically was tailed off the tractor lane as well so that was all that was needed for the from an infrastructure point of view then outside. So we're seeing a lot of this type of shed um, being done from an outside block or a second unit and um, there's all at the moment there's five projects on the go that's basically the exact same layout um, blueprint as the shed so it is becoming more popular and I suppose from a point of view of low infrastructure and starting up from 
um, a bare minimum or if you are milking on a on a different block and you just literally want to calf cows there and bring them down here it does make sense it's the same as putting up um, any sort of kind of second unit it's it's the bare minimum to get cows milked and milk in the tanks look obviously it won't suit every farm like this is um having no housing it's going to only suit a very dry farm um and saying that then obviously this is in carlo so it's in the in the, in the southeast but at, out of the five projects that's going on at the moment two of them are in galway one of them is in westmead obviously all dry farms but still the, the same principle um that they're going to calve cows on the home block and then bring them down and milk them on the robot. So, um, it, as I said, it's not going to suit every farm, but it's a, definitely an option that's worth looking for. So, while this looks like a relatively small and uh, simple build, um, Lely Mullingar take a whole approach to the farm. So, basically, when Lely Mullingar come out to the farm, you're going to have a yard designer there. So, he's going to look at your total farm to see what you have and see what you need so like so this farm here they did it didn't need a crush down here because there's a crush up in the farmyard that the cows can walk to so other farms if it's an out block they might actually need a crush here because well they won't be able to tb test down here they won't be able to do ai or anything like that because they have no crush down here so it depends um it's not just a matter of like oh there's the shed let's just put that in the middle of the block and that's uh, out of the five units that are being done at the moment out of those five sheds they're actually all slightly different depending on the farmer's needs. So um, some farms needed a footbat area, some farms needed a separation room. So all these things were included one, when the team from Mullingar come out and they look at it and they see what you need. It's a total farm approach, not just here's a robot shed, let's put it there and that's, let's go milking cows. And likewise then, it's not just a matter of putting the robot there and, and just throwing your roadways anywhere. It's, there's still a good bit of thinking behind it. So. Um, we'll work with what's there, but if it's a blank site altogether and there's no roadways there whatsoever, obviously it, uh, uh, from the team, there's farm management support advisors. So we would go out to farm, and we would look at what's there, we would look at the acres there, and we would map out where the roadways need to go and where the drinkers need to go, and paddock system if you want to go the paddock system route. So there's a lot of thought still behind it, not just a matter of putting in the shed and that's it. Um, and then it goes for a startup, like that's another kind of portion of the of the team um, setting it up. So when you're doing a startup on this type of build, well, it's going to be, I suppose, um, a bit more thinking has to go into it because you don't have sheds, you don't have cubicles, you don't have straw bedding. So the time of the year even to start up is, is kind of crucial to the success of it. As the cows are calving straight to grass here, we, we need grass available to them and obviously they need to be compact calf because there's no point in having an April and May calvers here on this system. So the six week calving rate for the herd is 92% and has been over 90% for the last four or five years. Um, the production for the herd um, is in around 7,300 litres sold and last year they did 560 kilos of milk solids. The target, or I suppose what's going to happen this year is probably a bit more. They peaked a bit higher and the protein is up this year. So we'd expect it to be closer to the 600 kilo mark and probably in around the seven and a half thousand years. So, as I said, like the calving rate is quite important here. So we do three weeks AI. Um, all cows, uh, we submit about 90, uh, I think it was 91 or 92% in the, in the three weeks for AI. Um, we haven't scanned yet, but we hope and then that in around 90% will be calving in six weeks again. Um, the empty rate then will be running in around 10% with the empty and late calf cows usually sold off to actually other robot farms. So um, coming around November, any of the late calving cows or empty cows that are still milking well are sold to a different robot, uh, another robot farm or any robot, any farm and milked on then. So we, as I said, then they're shut down in December. So they won't be milked on here. Um, so for buffer feeding wise, so in the springtime or during the summer when we're uh, drought prone here, so in the summer we'll be doing a good bit of buffer feeding. Um, at the moment, as you can see there, we're feeding straw. So we're just after coming out of a drought. Uh, grass growth is after taking off. We actually got a grass growth of 90 last week, but the milk urea is quite high because there's a lot of nitrogen sitting there in the ground. So the milk urea has gone up to 40 plus. So we've introduced some uh, straw just to buffer feed, just let them pick away at it if they want there's enough feeding space there for 21 cows. Generally, we don't 
ever feed much silage there so as I said the, the ground here is quite dry so a lot of the silage is actually fed out in the paddocks so in the summer when there's a drought it's fed out in the paddocks even last November we would have been feeding silage out in the paddocks um, we have there's a bale on winder so literally just puts paddock or puts the silage around in in lines around the paddock so it's does very little damage to the to the ground and that way then we don't have a don't have to keep a lot of silage in the shed either so in wet weather or in I suppose even over the years like we this farm started up and the robot started up in 2014 so obviously since 2014 we've had a fairly mixed bag of, of springs and summers and even 2018 we had the snow here beast from the east was here so um, the shed is faced so like the lock and barriers and the feed bay is facing the east so generally we don't get um, wind from the east but obviously it's happened two times over the last three or four years now that we have so in those cases um, like the wind will be blown into the shed and the cows wouldn't like to they don't like to hang around the shed those days so whenever the, the wind is actually going through the shed they literally come in milk and be gone and go back out to the paddock quicker than as if if the wind was coming from the west it would actually hang in the shed longer if it was a very rainy day um you would see cows hanging around the shed a bit longer um but like that shed is so small like you fit about maybe there's been maybe maybe 80 cows would fit in it at one time um but generally wouldn't i suppose the cows here are so used to the weather they're out in it so they don't really get a choice there is obviously the boundary ditch is there if it was a very wet windy day or there was snow or whatever we would put them cows would be put in a more sheltered paddock if possible and that's the way we kind of work it um as i said like the cow when the cows are out and they're from february till december like they're just used to the weather anyway so what we have found over the years though i suppose since 2013 every single year there's been a drought so except 2017 so literally every single year the cows are being fed silage out in the paddock and it's those years that when it gets to 30 plus degrees that they're nearly under more pressure than when it's wet and windy um the cows aren't happy out in the paddock because it's too hot they're not really happy in the shed because it's still too hot so it's it's nearly more so the the hot weather in the summer that affects yield more um than the windy wet snow to be honest I suppose anytime we have someone here looking at the farm, there's nearly always asked the question of when are you putting cubicles in or will you ever put cubicles in? And I suppose it hasn't been done yet and we've had a fair range of weather over the years and I can't see it ever been done because as I said, like there's enough dry cow housing up there and it's a system. So I suppose robots are only milking the cows. The system is a grass-based spring calving system. Um, whether there were robots here or there was there were being milked on a parlour, it would be the same system. It was the same system in the old parlour. Once the transition was made to spring calving, the cows went out full time until they were dried off. So it was the same thing. So all it is is just a milking facility. So the robot just because you have robots doesn't mean they have to be milking 365 and going 24 seven. So I suppose what's more important for this, for these type of setups that are going in, and I suppose for spring calving setups in general, is to make sure that there's enough grass there in the spring. So obviously the cows are going out full time straight away. So grassland management is key to make sure, I suppose the autumn planner goes well, that it's, it's set up. So we would close with an average farm cover of about 700, give or take here, maybe 750, um, so that there's enough grass here in the spring. So again, I suppose from a, from a farm management, um, farm management support advisor point of view, that would be something that would be constantly, I suppose, at discussion meetings, and one-on-one -on -one saying um, any of the spring calving herds is make sure there's enough grass closed off so that there's actually enough grass there for the springtime so it's these type of systems whether it's no housing or, or housing spring calve systems do need grass available in the springtime especially if you're a dry farm like you need grass available to them when you can get them out so it's it would be key to have grass available in the spring and then to monitor the grass that's actually there in the spring because the last couple of springs have been quite slow so there's no point in going through all the grass and having 100 percent grazed and we still haven't hit magic day so all these things are constantly i suppose being talked about at discussion group meetings and then for anyone that's in their first year and, and even in their second year we will go through it a bit more on in-depth one-on-one so um there's myself sean and cormac as farm management support advisors so those farms that are spring calving and want to get the cows out early we will be paying more attention to them and anyone in the first year or two then actually going out on farm and walking the farm and making sure that there is enough grass available to the cows for the next x amount of weeks um, 
and if there's not then coming up with a plan obviously on a system like this um any grass-based system with robots you need cows visiting 24 7 so there's no point in having big lulls in the middle of the night or big lulls in any part of the day so it would be quite important to get cows moving and keep cows moving and especially I suppose with a shed the size of this and not just purpose-built sheds like this but there's other sheds that ha um, there's other farms have done types of sheds like this that's just um, the bare minimum onto the edge of their own farmyard so the slatted area I suppose is, is quite small around the robot so you, you can't have a burst of cows come in that are all due for milking so cow flow is quite important in any robot uh, grazing system and I suppose that's the point of farm management support advisors that's we're there to help with that and um, make the I suppose make a more even flow over the 24 hours of a, a day a lot of people that are putting in this uh, are, are looking at or are, and are putting in this type of unit on a second block or an outside block is to reduce the reliance on labour. So um, I suppose from a labour point of view in the spring here, what goes into it is um, there's Brian is here full time and then there, during the springtime when there's ca cows calving and heifers to be trained on the robot, there will be a uh, part-time workman here from about uh, he starts about eight o'clock in the morning so he's finished by about 12 and that's it then for the day so then in the evening time then it's just brine and it's just feeding calves so I suppose what we know what was noticed here in the first few years is and same with the parlor heifers take the longest time to train in the parlor and the robot so heifer training was a, a big thing that would consume time if you let it so the way it's worked here now is heifers only milked once a day so part-time man comes in the morning and that's the job that's given to him so put the heifers through that haven't been milked on their own and that evening then the heifers aren't milked so the heifers are only milked once a day until they want to go into the robot themselves so whenever they want to go into the robot themselves they can get milked twice a day some heifers after 24 hours are, are, are visiting twice a day and other heifers could take a week so that would be the most time consuming thing down here in the springtime um, Obviously calving cows and feeding calves is done up in the farmyard and that would be the other big time consuming thing. Um, once the heifers are trained and I suppose you're into April and you know hopefully spring um, grass is grown and uh, silage is out of the diet and all that sort of thing then it's relatively just kind of grassland management basically. So you're talking about moving two strip wires in the morning and one in the evening. So in the morning time the two strip wires have to move before 10 o'clock and in the evening time the uh, wire can be moved any time after five o'clock in the evening so um they're the kind of main jobs outside and obviously you've your your typical grassland management so you're doing a farm walk you're cutting out paddocks you're baling paddocks um that sort of thing and then from a robot point of view then in the morning you're just going in you're cleaning the robot arm you're changing your milk filter give the shed a bit of a wash check the computer which can be done on the phone so a lot of the time you probably have checked it before you've even come down here um, you could check it the evening before so as you see there there's no separation there so if we wanted to root a cow that had mastitis or cow for AI what we actually do is we root her out to the C block behind you so basically that block is the smallest block and it's the closest block to the shed so we'll root them out to that paddock so that they're there for the night then as the gate changes at two o'clock in the morning so they actually go down to the furthest paddock at two o'clock in the morning so we don't want the mastitis cow or the ai cow or whatever to go down to the furthest way block so we have a route to the c block and then it's just a matter of either going out and getting the cow in the morning or she's probably in the shed waiting for you anyway and there's locking barriers there so all that has to happen is you lock her up um either ai or, or treat her or whatever you're doing with her and then you can let her back out to the grazeway so that's the only other kind of jobs that can be done in the morning then um, in the evening time then it's just the bare minimum of give the shed a very very quick wash and move your strip wire. But this shed is um, fairly central to the in, in the 100 acres um, that doesn't necessarily mean that all milk and blocks should go in the middle um, you'll see that the farm is quite long and narrow so it made sense to actually break up the farm into an ABC to actually have the robots in the middle of the block um, any of the farms I, that we've been looking at um, that are doing it, that are, that are doing the second second milking block now as well, a lot of the farms actually don't have the robots in the middle of the block because if you have a very square farm, if you think about it, and you put the robots in the middle, you've actually created four squares. You actually haven't 
created an ABC at all, you've actually probably created an ABCD. So, and you'll notice, and as, as I said earlier, there's actually one block that's kind of far away and you'll see where the cows are today. It's the furthest walk, so there's about 750 meters, which we want one block to, one block needs to be far away, one block needs to be generally fairly close, and then the other block is kind of the leftover block. So we don't want all the blocks um, all within 200 meters of the shed. So a lot of the time we actually end up putting the shed probably maybe a third of the way down um, the farm rather than in the middle of the block. From a support point of view, it's crucial in the first year that I suppose prior to start up, your road networks are done properly, your paddock system is done, your drinker system is done, and that there's a plan there. Um, if there's no plan, I suppose it could very well fail. So the, the whole point of the team in Mullingar is that there's project coordination there, there's a yard designer there, and then you've um, farm management support advisor. So if, up until startup, you have all these people working together. And then after startup, you have your farm management support advisors and obviously you have your engineers. So your farm management support advisors do a lot of work in the first year to make sure that everything can get going as well as possible. So we make sure everything is laid out the way it should be laid out. And we know where, why it should be laid out this way because we've been doing it for the last seven, eight, nine, ten years. So we've a lot of farms there um, and a lot of different farms. So there's lots of different setups as well. So it's not just a matter of like, oh, this farm is very similar to another farm. Let's do it the exact same way. It can be very, it, it can be small tweaking. It could be slightly different roadways, uh, the direction, like depending on the ditches. So there's a lot of thinking that goes into it. So it's not just a matter of like, let's throw up a, a unit like this and let's, let's go on. The support, you need the support, you need the help in the first year. And we have online, or we have discussion group meetings that are ongoing anyway, but it's important that if it's not done in year one, um, it's very hard to undo bad habits that are picked up by both farmer and by cow. So it's crucial to have the help in year one.